Our stated values are blessing, excellence, stewardship, and transformation, our best values, B-E-S-T. And so that, I mean, that vernacular, we're always talking about how is this decision like a blessing to everybody involved? Like, is this really excellent? Like we're representing our Lord and Savior to the world. This better be pretty darn good, right? We need to have a high level of excellence. Stewardship, we realize this business isn't ours. Uh, this money isn't ours, both from a, a worldly perspective, like we're managing money for other people. We need to be good stewards, but ultimately this all belongs to God. And we need to honor him in that. We're stewards, we need to make decisions in line that would line up with what he wants us to do with his assets. And then transformation, is this really moving the needle forward and helping uh, to inspire transformation? you know change uh, the way the world is working in a better way to you know help humans flourish according to God's design for his creation welcome to grow think tank this is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies I am the host my name is Gene Hammett I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth are you ready to grow today we look at attracting talented people and you do this with a lot of different things inside your company. But the special piece behind this is we look at the importance of your mission and the values of the company really do mean something if you want the right people to work with you. Attracting talented people has become very difficult. This job market is not easy. There's a lot of factors at play here, whether it be, uh, you know, unemployment factors and whatnot. But most of the clients I work with have very high skilled positions open and they're not necessarily people that um, don't already have jobs, if you will, but they are looking for people and they're looking for the right people and attracting talented people to your company takes you getting a lot of things right, but you ideally you want to create, be a magnet for your people that are best for you. You want to make sure you know what that looks like and you want to make sure you have the systems in place that allow you to identify that and bring them on board with ease. Attracting talented people may be the difference between you scaling up to double or triple your size from here or struggling, frankly, because I, I talked to a lot of uh, leaders that are struggling getting the right people inside their organization. Today's special guest is Robert Netsley. He is the CEO, founder of Inspire Investing. They are a mission-driven organization. They have a financial services company that is really based on the biblical values, and they want to make sure all of the customers they have are aligned to those biblical values. The investments that they make are all aligned with those biblical values. But on top of that, they are attracting incredible employees that are talented and really moving the needle for the company because those people are aligned with the mission of the company. That's what we unpack today with Robert. We go through a lot of the different aspects of it. What you'll really find valuable is the very end of this uh, interview. We talked about what uh, disagree and commit means and what it really can do for your organization when you get this right. Disagree and commit is something that you'll have to go all the way to the end to listen to, but it will help you become a better leader. If you're curious about what it takes to go to the next step in your leadership and what are the, the things that you're missing, whether it be structure or systems or really just how you evolve as a leader to the next level, then you want to make sure you check out the Fast Growth Boardroom. We have created some of the founders and, and CEOs of fast growth companies. We do some fun things like racing cars and doom buggies, but we really focus on how do you become the best leader? How do you create leadership that is a driving force in the business, not just at the CEO level, but across the executive team and down throughout the organization. Fast Growth Boardroom is a place where you can be the best leader you want to be. You just got to go there, check it out. If you think you are a good fit, just apply. We'll get on the phone. We'll talk. There's no commitment for this. There's no cost. But I want to help you figure out your game plan to growth through this idea of increased leadership or being an extraordinary leader. Just go to fastgrowthboardroom.com. Now, here's an interview with Robert. Robert, how are you? I'm doing great, Gene. How are you doing? I am fantastic. Excited to have you on Growth Think Tank. We have uh, featured a lot of founders and CEOs from the Inc. 5000. You're one of them. So I'm excited to talk to you today. Yeah, likewise. Before we get started, I've already let the audience know a little bit about you. I want you to tell us about the company. So tell us about Inspire Investing. Yeah, Inspire Investing is a, uh, a biblical responsible investment firm. So we help uh, essentially investors uh, identify companies that are positive, inspiring, align with biblical values, and you know, and also provide uh, a good investment thesis. And we do that in a variety of ways. We have exchange traded funds uh, that we manage on the New York Stock Exchange. We work with direct clients and our wealth management offices around the country. And we have a fintech platform and a few other, a few other projects and irons in the fire. 
Well, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind around this is you could do investing for anyone, but I guess over time or more recently, you've decided to really be focused on this biblical and that's, that's really def- your niche of investing. Is that fair to say? Right. And that's what we do. That's, that's, uh, I mean, there's no other reason we're in business other than that. <laughs> I want to look at some of the factors that have you know positioned you guys in this market, but I'm just taking a moment to look at the niche. A lot of people think niching is about the marketing and the customers you go after, but I want to look at it from a different perspective with you. You're bringing on people that believe in this mission just as much as you do, and, and that's really a benefit to the company. Tell us a little bit about that benefit. Yeah. I mean, we've all heard the term raving fans, right? And it's this idea that uh, customers can and should be more than just customers. Uh, they should be fans of your business. And with our, with our company, I mean, we are definitely a missionally driven business. Like our, our mission is to inspire transformation for God's glory throughout the world by biblically responsible and in, uh, investing innovation and excellence. And, you know, when we connect with our customers who are investors all over the world and financial advisors um, as well, uh, we're connecting with some really deeply held beliefs and values. And, you know, they're, these, these people are ordering their lives around their faith and uh, to align their values with what they do on a daily basis. There's a verse in the Bible, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Basically everything you do uh, as a Christian should be for the glory of God. And so we're in finance, we're in investments. And so that's, we're trying to do that investing for the glory of God. And there are millions and millions and millions of people around the world that would like to do the same thing. So we're helping them, you know, telling, that, telling that story. Here's how we can connect your deeply held values and beliefs, something you care deeply about with a very practical part of your life uh, in a real tangible way. And the result has been truly raving fans that tell all their friends, all their family and are extremely loyal um, and have a totally different view of our company. I mean, they call us, they say they're, they're praying for us. They send us notes all the time, emails, Twitter messages. It's just, a, it's so exciting. I mean, having worked in the secular traditional investment uh, businesses of some of the largest, you know, companies uh, in America versus what I do now. It's night and day. So I get those benefits. My real question behind this is what are the benefits behind having this mission driven organization specifically around the biblical values for attracting the right talent for your company? Have you seen a benefit there? Oh yeah. As far as uh, talent for our company, um, we've never really had to place a help wanted ad really uh, very limited. Uh, we are inundated by just extremely competent professionals who find out about what we're doing and just want to work with our business. I interviewed a computer scientist yesterday who is, you know, incredibly bright um, and is begging to, <laughs> to work with our company, you know, and he's got other offers on the table and he just told me straight, like, look, I, I mean, I just believe in what you're doing. I want to work for your company. I will take a lower pay if I had to. I don't know what, you know, his other offers are or anything like that, but he's just telling us like, look, I'd rather work for your business for less money than work anywhere else. Like, this is what I want to do with my life. And um, that's been consistent across um, our, uh, our growth trajectory is uh, we attract incredibly missionally aligned staff who work harder, work longer uh, for the right reasons, who don't create frustrations in the business, who are willing to, you know, go through the inevitable bumps and friction points of a rapidly growing company with, you know, joy in their hearts and uh, really pitch in to help make this thing go rather than just thinking about themselves. And um, it, it, it's a different team dynamic and makes the, the business much healthier. Now, hold on for a second. Robert just said something really interesting that people will work for less pay. Let's look at that specifically. If you create an organization that the culture is strong, it's supportive, you communicate really well with each other, you provide a growth plan for people, you create space for people to feel safe, and you are truly leading them so that they feel supported, they feel heard and valued, then you will have a much easier chance to attract more people to help you move the business forward, help you continue scaling. So it's this you know ever-evolving circle of things create a great place right now and attract great talent based on that. Now, when you get this right, you have a force inside the business that really does generate new employees. Here's how it works. If it's a great place to work, then those employees that are there now will tell their friends and they will only tell people that are really a good fit for keeping it a great place to work. They won't go out to the people that are difficult or cause problems. They're political, they're gossipers. They will go to people because they want to protect that culture. But you have to be intentional about what that culture is and they will do it for less pay. 
Robert said it. I'm just putting a spotlight on it for here today so that you can actually be intentional about the culture that you're creating and making it a great place to work. Back to Robert. I know you've worked in some other places, some really big companies, and we don't have to throw anybody on the bus here, but you know that's not typical. Right. <laughs> yeah, to put it to put it mildly, right? I mean, corporate America, corporate anywhere uh, is not really known for, um, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's more of like do unto others before they do unto you in some cases. <laughs> or, uh, you know, just really looking out for yourself, looking out for number one um, is the whole climb the corporate ladder. But that's, yeah, that's not the case here. And I think, and there are certain, some secular companies, other businesses that are not faith-based in nature that can, that do have that same uh, esprit de corps yeah. when they really focus around a mission that's bigger than them, like a more altruistic, let's go change the world together mission. Um, and uh, so it's not just us, right? I mean, I, I'm sure there's people listening here that have that going Going on for them. And so this is just an encouragement that that is something to nurture and to seek after and to make sure you don't drift away from as your business grows. Yeah. You know, my, the first thing that comes to my mind, and I've talked about it on the podcast before, is the brand called Patagonia. You're probably familiar with them. Right. And yeah. Their mission is really around uh, planet Earth and, and really the conservation and protection of planet Earth. And they give back money, and they, but all of the employees, and they don't have to, to do job ads either, are so aligned with that mission. You're seeing that same benefit with your biblical values focused business and, and mission. And I just want to put a highlight on that for just a moment here. That is, um, you know, a lot of people struggle with getting talented employees. And did, was this a very intentional piece to, to making this selection? I know it comes from your heart. I'm a Christian too. And, and I really do believe in, and, you know, following God's word and, and, and doing everything I can along that. But you, most people don't do that in our professional world. Was this an added benefit to, to making that choice or a conscious benefit? Yeah. Yeah, I, so I did not uh, wake up one day and say, hey, I want to start a business. Um, it, was, it came out of a conviction of my conscience. I couldn't do my job with a clean conscience anymore at Wells Fargo. And I realized that here I am the president of our pro-life pregnancy center. And I own three stocks and companies manufacturing abortion drugs. Like it just, you know, clash. Um, completely. I just couldn't do my job. So there really was no intentional, like, hmm, if I start a mission driven business, I'll be able to track better time, talent. I'll have raving fans. I'll, you know, whatever. It was really, I can't do my job anymore at my you know previous firm and I need to do something different. And really it's just been uh, a blessing to realize the benefits of having such a, a mission driven uh, Genesis story, I guess, that has, you know, I've learned along the way, uh, those benefits, uh, benefits to the business. Uh, but it wasn't like an intentional part of a business plan, you know, when we were starting out. You know, the funny thing is, if you go back and read the Patagonia story, and I think it's Yves Shembord, totally messed yeah, up. I can't, video, but I can't say his he, name. Um, <laughs> he was, he's a, he's a reluctant entrepreneur as well. So you have that mm -hmm. in common with, with someone that I admire a lot. When you think about leading this group of talented people on a mission, what would we see on a regular basis inside your business that lets us know that this mission is not just something you put out there for marketing, that it is truly the way you live inside the organization, outside the organization, and is a, cons a consistent thing throughout everything you do? Uh, we start and end every meeting with prayer, no matter what we're talking about, you know, new paint on the wall or whatever. I mean, anytime we get people together, like we start and end with prayer, right? Okay. Uh, that's, that's pretty intentional. We, yesterday, we just finished moving into a, a really brand new office. Like we're expanding. We need a new space. Just moved in. It's an amazing space. We have uh, this bell we hang on the wall to kind of remind us of, you know, the New York Stock Exchange. We get to ring the bell three times so far on the NICE. Uh, but this bell we ring every time we get, um, you know, growth in our ETF and uh, these orders come through. Well, before we hung it up on the wall, like everybody got to sign the back of this like wood frame that it's in to signify that every time that we ring that bell, like you're part of inspiring transformation for God's glory. Like everybody in this office, you know, is part of that story, whether you're answering the phone at the front desk or you're managing the portfolios of billions of dollars, you know, you're part of it. And uh, so there's some tangible ways. We also, uh, you know, in the break room, we've got a big like cork board thing that we hang up all the emails and all this, this stuff that we get from people all over the world with just gushing enthusiasm and pouring out their thanks to uh, inspire for being able, giving away to like, you know, integrate these deeply held values into their financial life. Things that they've wanted to do, these clients have wanted to do for a long time, didn't even know it was possible how to do it. And when they find Inspire, it's like, thank God, here's what I've been looking for for years and now I can do this. And so we, we keep it up front and center, you know, just as some of the, you know, really practical ways we do that on a daily basis. You mentioned the values that the company has. I've found that fast growth 
companies have values. All of us do, whether they, they live by them or not. But um, is this a conscious thing that you guys do on a daily basis inside meetings, inside conversations to make sure that everyone stays aligned with the values that, that go underneath this mission that you have defined for the company? Yeah. So our, our stated values are blessing, excellence, stewardship, and transformation are best values, B-E-S-T. And so that, I mean, that vernacular, we're always talking about how is this decision like a blessing to everybody involved? Like, is this really excellent? Like we're representing our Lord and Savior to the world. This better be pretty darn good, right? We need to have a high level of excellence. Stewardship, we realize this business isn't ours. Uh, this money isn't ours, both from a, a worldly perspective, like we're managing money for other people. We need to be good stewards, but ultimately this all belongs to God and we need to honor him in that. We're stewards need to make decisions in line that would line up with what he wants us to do with his assets. And then transformation, is this really moving the needle forward and helping uh, to inspire transformation? you know, change uh, the way the world is working in a better way to, you know, help humans flourish according to God's design for his creation, right? And uh, so we, it's always about our best values and our and our staff really to speak the same language uh, when we're having conversations um, around those values. Now, Robert just talked about the values of the company. Living the values really is something different than just having values. The, the big difference here is living values is a constant daily progress of of really mentioning the values, sharing stories, recognizing people, but most companies don't live the values. They just have values. When you create the kind of organization that really does live the values, then you're able to, to bring on the right people. You're able to onboard them. You're able to support them and, and help them grow, work through difficult challenges because those values are very supportive and they guide you and them to the next level. You make decisions through these values and living the values is something I've seen as very constant in fast growth companies that are considered a great place to work, considered a, you know, a magnet for attracting talented people and for growing the company beyond where it is today. You want to make sure that you have all the key factors. If you're not sure what that means, I've done some free work around this. Just reach out to me by email, gene at genehammett.com. Happy to share with you that free training. Uh, I don't have a sign up page or anything like that. There's no signups. Just send me an email. Happy to share that with you if you want to learn more about living the values. Now back to Robert. Robert, you have shared with us a lot of the, the background of the mission. And I know a lot of entrepreneurs have made some mistakes in their journeys. Would you be willing to share a mistake that we could learn from that you're willing to openly discuss today? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I, there's so many to choose from. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, my, um, is personally, so I am probably a lot like many people watching this podcast, entrepreneur, like very driven, um, you know, high driven personality, uh, people naturally, you know, my emotion, I don't really have many emotions, I guess, you know, according to these personality profiles I take, like, I don't get my feelings hurt. I don't really know that other people have feelings, you know, those kind of things. Um, <laughs> so, you know, if anything, I will have a tendency to just kind of say like, here, we're going to like steamroll through. And if somebody was in the way, I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't really notice that you were there. Um, so I just had to intentionally make sure that, you know, just grow in those areas that are not natural to me to be more empathetic and to understand and, and reach out, um, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, like if there's a meeting or something and, you know, I said X, Y, Z and people were, you know, I just kind of feel there's some stress or, or tension there, like know how to, you know, circle around to that person, uh, tease that out of them. Because the other, the other drawback is I have such a strong vision and strong opinions that oftentimes those that are not so, um, you know, have different opposite personality than they won't speak up um, in a meeting when they disagree with something I have to say. When I really do want to hear their disagreement, like I want to hear other perspectives, but because mine is so convicted and I'm the CEO, uh, oftentimes people don't uh, share what really on their heart and that makes bad decisions. So I've had to learn how to, you know, not temper my enthusiasm, but help others feel more like really welcome and safe to share their dissenting opinion in a meeting. Um, and, uh, you know, know that I'm not just going to, you know, they're not going to get in trouble. <laughs> they're not, you know, I, I want and value their feedback. Uh, and so that's been a kind of a, a personal skill that I've had to learn and have certainly, uh, you know, misstepped previous years and conversations. So. I appreciate you sharing that with us. I think we've all got places where we, we've grown from, we're growing to, and mistakes are natural. So I'm glad you opened that up. But I, I do want to put a spotlight on this. Um, asking people to disagree with you. I wrote down here, I want to hear there's just disagreement. Um, how do you create a space where people feel welcome to do that and they feel safe to do it? What are the specifics that you've learned that work? 
So it starts with just having a transparent business culture. Like we don't keep things from each other. I mean, obviously there's things that are, you know, legally we can't share, you know, HR stuff with, with the entire staff, but uh, you know, just have being very transparent and being honest um, about how we're feeling. It starts with me. So, I mean, if there's something bugging me or whatever, like I'll share it, but not in a, you know, and not in an argumentative or hurtful or like bitter way, just very matter of fact, you know, openness. And uh, also just practically when we're sitting around the boardroom, or meeting table and you just kind of get a sense that somebody has something to say but they're not saying it just asking directly like hey Jim seems like you might want to say something like what is what is, what are your thoughts on this like I would love to hear what you really think about this and and really just kind of give them the opportunity and press into it um, and then uh, showing by example again in just the the ongoing business of the company that when people do disagree I don't me or others aren't just coming like piling on it like oh, that's a terrible idea like thanks for sharing your story and then you know totally crush it <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so when they see if that is happening, like no one's going to talk, right? Uh, so they can see when other people dissent and share their dissenting opinions and it's actually valued. And maybe even the decision is changed because of what they uh, shared and that I don't get my feelings hurt and other leaders aren't getting their feelings hurt or, you know, there's no retaliation. That's the kind of culture that creates uh, openness and willing to, you know, again, disagree, but then we all leave the meeting room by committing, I disagree and commit, right? Because uh, we want to have, if there's five people in the room, there's five different opinions, uh, but we have to leave with one decision. And that's where our mission and vision and values come in as the North Star and say, okay, among all our disparate opinions, how are we going to move forward towards the vision aligned? And yeah, even though we all might have different opinions on certain aspects of the strategy, we're going to commit to what the final decision is and feel good about it. And like, we're all in. I, I want to go deeper on two things there. The first one's really short. And I'm just kind of curious if this is something you've just had to learn. But you mentioned, you know, asking someone directly a question. Are you reading their body language? Or is it just, you know, someone's usually disagrees at this point with a, this type of idea, and you know that they've got something to say that may add value to it? Or, or is it really the body language stuff or a combination? It, it's a combination. I mean, sometimes you'll have, like I'll hear, you know, in other meetings or something that so-and-so has, you know, a different opinion and they weren't really sharing it. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to ask them specifically what they think about this in the meeting. <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, occasion, occasionally that's like, but more often, you know, just picking up on their body language or if I, I know their personality is generally more reserved, I, like I'm going to have to tease this out of them. Um, but you know, you just kind of know someone's sitting there, they're being quiet. Yep. yep. You know. I, I, I think it's just a matter of just you looking for those cues. Yeah. Um, the, the other question I had, and we'll wrap up with this one question is this decide and commit. I've, I've had conversations with many clients around this. You've described it pretty well. I just want you to go a little bit deeper with this concept of we're going to talk about whatever idea this is, um, whether it's a new investment or a marketing idea or types of customers or whatever it is, but you're going to have some healthy conflict. But before you leave the meeting is your goal is to say, okay, we've disagreed, but now we have to commit and move forward. Tell me just a little bit more how that works inside these heated meetings. Yeah, it's, you know, um, super important. I mean, we we need to um, come together. So how that works is, again, you foster openness, you foster disagreement, we, people feel safe, and um, like they're not going to get retaliated against or whatever, right? So everyone's sharing their honest opinions, honest feedback, nothing's off the table, uh, as far as, you know, what do you think about this idea or that idea? Um, and then, you know, I Again, I, I try to speak less than everybody else because ultimately as a CEO, I'm going to make the decision uh, if it comes down to like, there's no consensus, which there's not usually consensus. Uh, I'm going to have to make a decision here, right? But if I'm just the one talking, you know, if, if this person talks and then I answer and this person talks and then I answer and this person talks and I answer, like that's not healthy. And so I will, I purposefully just like sit there like this and listen, you know, and there's sometimes pregnant pauses, like they're kind of everyone like looking at me like, well, what do you think? <laughs> like, I don't want you to know what I think, because then you're not going to say what you think. So I just like, no, what do you think? You know? And, uh, and, and people get it. Like they, then they, it really kind of livens up the room because then they, everyone's talking with each other. Uh, they're not just waiting on, you know, CEO man to tell them what to think. And, uh, and that's where healthy discussions really happen. And then once I feel like, okay, we've really heard from around the room, we've got some good ideas. Maybe I've been writing things on a whiteboard or something without talking, or maybe I'll interject kind of, you know, dig in deeper. If someone shares an opinion, like, hey, that's interesting. Like, what, tell me what you mean by when you say this, 
what do you mean by that? Or what do you think about that? To get other people talking. And uh, once we get all the information, I make a decision, right? Or we make a decision, or usually the decision is pretty obvious what might be the best way forward uh, in light of our you know, values. So, um, and then we leave the room committed, you know, and uh, rarely is there uh, a time when people are kind of upset that we made a certain decision. And, um, you know, again, they might disagree, but they're not upset. You know, this is how we do business and they felt heard they felt validated and like here we go that gets in line with the mission and we're ready to roll um, if they're in those rare times that maybe somebody did get their feelings hurt in a meeting or they just didn't feel like this like this was really the bad decision they're kind of upset about it or concerned about it i'll circle back with them on a one-on-one basis like later and kind of um, just have a conversation take them with coffee or something like that or, or meet with them and and do whatever needs to be done to help things out. Robert, I appreciate you going through that because I think a lot of people need to hear this particular experience, not just from me all the time, but from people that are living it. Uh, it's one thing for the executive coach that's, that's having this conversation to say, this is kind of the way this typically works. But for you to say, this is how we have decided to work together. We want their opinions and they want them to feel safe to share it. And, right. and this whole, you know, just wrapping it up with disagree and commit before we leave the meeting sort of sounds like that whole rule of don't go to bed mad. Yeah, right. <laughs> and don't our, let the sun our, go down on your anger, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so there, there is some some overlap with good personal relationships and great business relationships too. So Robert, thanks for being here on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Gene. My job is to bring you the best content I can. I, I reach out and find people that I admire and inspire to be great leaders. And I want to have those conversations just like I did with Robert here today. So I know Robert's listening in on this, but I really the recap to get behind this is you want to really clarify your mission so that not just so that you are getting the right customers, that's a benefit, but you want to make sure the right people are coming on board because they will have more loyalty. They will work through challenges and they will stay and be committed. He even said they're willing to take less money. So think about that for a second. Um, and then finally, just, just looking at the values and looking at how they are, are able to align around those things and even disagree and come together and commit moving forward. This is the marks of a great organization and great leadership. If you're trying to understand what your next step in leadership is, you might want to check out some of the free resources we have. The podcast can help you, but if you think you need more support, I'd love to, to give you my services to help you create a game plan. We have a community of founders, CEOs, fast growth companies. You may be a good fit for that. If you want to check that out, just go to fastgrowthboardroom.com and you can apply. Love to talk to you about what you're doing next. Absolutely free, but I want to help you be the best leader you can be. Create the place where people don't want to leave from. When you think about growth and you think about leadership, Think of Growth Think Tank. As always, leave courage. See you next time.